Freedom of employment, does it really exist? Join Steve Draskowski and me next to hear lots more. I'm Sue Jeffers for Libertarian Viewpoint. Libertarianism is all about liberty, the exercise of freedom that doesn't impinge on the rights of others. We constantly hear the drum roll of government solutions. This show's purpose is to allow you to see for yourself why non-government solutions are a better alternative. Today our guest is Steve Drazkowski. Hi Steve, welcome Hi, to the Sue. show. Thank you. Pleasure and we should tell the viewers that you are a Minnesota House representative and you're from the Wabasha area. Yes, I'm from Wabasha County. Actually, I live in the, the western part of Wabasha County at Mazeppa. Okay. Yeah. Population 842. So. Population 842. Okay, so you're about an hour and a half south of the cities? About that, yes. <laughs> yes. And you've been in the legislature for how long? I'm actually in my fourth year, so uh, uh, third, third term. Oh, mm -hmm. excellent. Okay. So last legislative session, you were there when Tim Pawlenty was governor and the Democrats had the majority. Mm -hmm. Now it's different this year. We have Mark Dayton sitting in the governor's chair and the Republicans are in the majority. What did you think of last session? Well, it's really quite a bit different. Uh, you know, we, we spent uh, the, the first two terms that I was in the legislature guarding the goal of freedom, if you will, Sue. And what we're seeing now is really uh, some opportunity for us to enact legislation that will uh, maybe recapture some of the freedoms that have been taken away from us over time. Um, and so uh, we're hoping to do more of that this session, actually. Uh, last session was really encumbered. Um, the majority of it was around the budget, and rightfully so. It was a budgeting year, uh, the first year of the biennium. And uh, the bulk of that discussion and the bulk of the air in the room uh, uh, belonged to the budget. And so um, uh, we did have some reforms in that budget. There were really good reforms. Uh, not very widely talked about, though. Uh, but uh, incidentally, those reforms in last year's budget uh, were able to bend the, the cost curve in the 14-15 biennium by two and a half billion dollars. Something that's not really talked about, but uh, something certainly as we go into the next session and look at our Reform 2.0 measures that we're looking at, opportunities that for us to do more of the same, decrease the cost of government and take it out of the lives of people and businesses so that they can operate again. So I think a lot of people don't understand or, or never knew that the state of Minnesota operates on a two-year budget. So the first year is the budget year, the second year is the bonding year. So last year, the session went pretty well. Mark Dayton vetoed everything except for the agricultural bill. And then we ended up with the state shutdown, correct? We did. And you still had a lot of people who were really upset about how much money you spent. The budget was way too big. Yeah, as a matter of fact, the previous it was the budget was uh, thir that we passed was was 34.4 billion plus another 1.5 billion of one-time spending, largely from borrowing. Um, and as we look at the biennium before, uh, you could argue whether that uh, spending was at about 30.5 billion or maybe a 32.5 billion dollar budget, but certainly a full six or 12 percent less than the recurring biennial budget that we passed just back in July for the current uh, biennium we're in. So um, you're right. Uh, we uh, we we grew government by 12 or 13 percent uh, at this point, depending on how you measure the numbers, and uh, certainly not the direction we need to be going. Uh, however, certainly remember. Uh, We've got uh, the most liberal governor probably in the history of Minnesota sitting in the governor's chair. His initial proposal was upwards of 20 or 22 percent increase in the in the cost of the budget, or actually a 22 percent budgetary increase was proposed, and uh, um, we uh, we at least came a, a long ways closer to zero from there. Which, uh, if it's any consolation, but not much. I, but they I, still but, spend too but, much. But money. I and others uh, certainly in the legislature were hoping to spend either the same as a previous biennium or even less and uh, we didn't uh, accomplish that goal. 
Yes, no matter who you talk to, the right side of the aisle, the left side of the aisle, everybody agrees that the state of Minnesota, well, except for Mark Dayton, everybody agrees that we're spending too much money. Mm -hmm. I think people get that. So next legislative session is a bonding year. That means we're going to borrow even more money. And the state of Minnesota has, I believe, $1.9 billion left before they cap out their borrowing limit. Do you think we're going to cap it? Well, I don't even know if we're going to have a bonding bill, Sue. Uh, we had a, a $497 million bonding bill as part of uh, the solution, if you will, that was agreed Excellent to last point. year. Excellent um, so point. So we've already had one in this biennium, and a good number of us are going to be saying, you know what, uh, we had our bonding bill, uh, we, f we funded our, our not little, uh, huge projects around the state of Minnesota. It's time to give a break to the uh, to the taxpayers because we have to remember bonding uh, debt service that pays off the bonding is the very fastest growing part of the state budget. We're approaching $1.2 billion. We will have passed a billion dollars in debt service for the first time in the history of our state, fastest growing part of the state budget. We've already got $6.3 billion of bonding debt to pay off. Uh, let's, let's give it a break and uh, and, and go on to some other types of reforms. Did you say a billion dollars in debt service? One point two billion dollars in debt service each biennium. Yes, that's part of our biennial budget. That's staggering, and that's a number that's we need to get out there a staggering. lot more often. I wanted to ask you before we get into why why I brought you here today. Um, I want to ask you about these these uh, reforms that you made that have adjusted the spending curve. Mm -hmm. Can you? Um, they don't get enough attention. Can you say a little bit about that? A lot of them were in the uh, Health and Human Services area. As we know, uh, Health and Human Services, incidentally, was, was projected in the 1450 in the next biennium to increase by about 22%, yet in the biennium that we haven't gotten to yet. And uh, uh, because of these reforms, we were able to bend that down to about 5% growth rather than 22%. So some amazing work. And a lot of that was done around some of the eligibility we, uh, for many of the health and human services programs. We, we provide some reforms and limits to eligibility. Uh, we also applied for some waivers from the federal government in order to do that. Those are built in there. Uh, but it's largely a health and human services area. Incidentally, uh, we were able to repeal the sick tax. We repealed a tax last year in the Minnesota legislature, uh, albeit that it, uh, it's going to take until 2018 to phase out, but uh, the legislation, it's in statute, it's in law, it's going to each year uh, uh, ratchet down until it evaporates in 2018. So some good stuff happened. So I think a lot of people don't know that 2% sick, sick tax, we all pay that. Mm -hmm. It's a tax on our medical expenses. Exactly. And that was a huge win, and you're right, not enough people hear about that either. It was. So what, what are we looking forward to next legislative session? What's, what's on the horizon? Well, uh, I think many people in Minnesota have heard about Reform 2.0. We talked about some of those reforms that happened last session. We collectively look at those and refer to them as Reform 1.0. In other words, that was the first uh, effort at reform. Again, some good stuff in that package. We went around Minnesota over the last several months, have gotten some input from them on what are some additional reforms you'd like to see to shrink the size of government, to uh, bring government to be more accountable to the people again. Uh, we know, unfortunately, it's been the other way around for so long. Um, and, and and uh, so we, we gathered a lot of that input over the last three months, and now we're uh, assembling that and, and coming forward. We'll have a, 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 a series of bills that we will be rolling out in a package that is going to be referred to, uh, has been referred to as Reform 2.0. We'll be bringing forward early in the session reforms that will make government smaller, make it more accountable, uh, take government out of the lives of families and businesses uh, so that they can work and hire people and, and uh, we can return to prosperity again. I'll be waiting for my phone call because I have a long list of suggestions that I would like to see in, the, in front of the legislature next year. I'll be happy to come and testify, too. I'm always highly entertained. We will be calling you. 